bunch of cyclists. Woo! A lot of people. A lot of people on the trail. Hey guys. Bike blogger here. On my way to work. It's a Tuesday morning. Let's make a right here. So today, I was thinking of talking about stoplights. Uh, I think I'll still do that. But I'm also going to talk about saddle sores. So stay tuned for that. Ah. I was trying to figure out what to talk about this morning. Um, to make, I, I already sort of covered this if you watch my other videos, but I don't know if I did an actual video all about it, but how to make a red stoplight turn green. Some stoplights have uh, cameras and I'm pretty sure they can detect bicyclists, although don't hold me to that. Um, and then there are other stoplights that have little magnetic wires in the ground. And once it senses metal, they'll react and make the signal change for you. They're designed for cars. Um, but uh, if you got a bike, how do you make it change? Well, if you look closely at the ground, you can see where the construction crew made the cuts. And you want to get the wheel of your rim, your wheel rim over that. And then a place to maximize the, uh, where the maximum sensitivity is of, uh, of, uh, the, um, sort of watching traffic here. Buses have to stop it. Railroad crossings. Um, maximum sensitivity is where the strip crosses over itself. I'll post a link in the description below. Woo. A little slow today, 20 miles an hour. Cars behind me. Alright. Where I live, it's a law, of course to stop at a stoplight. However, there is a rule. It's a state rule. You'd have to look at your lo local jurisdiction, but there's a rule where I live where if you stop at a light and it does not cycle after sitting at the light for two minutes or more, you can go ahead and go treat it as a stop sign which means you can't just you don't just have the right away all of a sudden you gotta still yield <clears throat> slowly working my way up the hill and letting all these people get to the stop sign there they go signal All right, so topic number two, saddle sores. Um, I got a bump on my butt 
right now. The way to prevent sores on your butt for cases like myself, because uh, I mean, if you're not if you're not cycling a long distance, you shouldn't be getting them at all. You're doing something wrong. Could mean your seat's too low. Uh, it could mean, uh, you know, it, what it really means is you're moving around on the saddle too much, which can do with bike fit. It can do with, uh, whew, phew, bugs. Uh, no, not bugs. Well, maybe, I don't know. You squash a bug and rub it all over you, I don't know. What's the reaction you're gonna get? <laughs> um, wearing cycling shorts can help. Uh, nowadays, cycling pants and shorts have a whole heck of a lot of padding. That's what most people buy it for. Um, however, cycling shorts were originally for uh, preventing uh, chafing and uh, rubbing around on the saddle. Um, I don't wear cycling shorts, I just wear regular street pants and some uh, boxer briefs. Um, whoo, feels nice. Feels nice outside, a little hot though. It's about uh, 83 degrees Fahrenheit like yesterday. Made a mistake in my video yesterday. I said we average around the 90s in the winter. Obviously I meant the summer. But like I was saying, uh, whether a lot of padding or not, as long as it keeps your rump from moving around, cycling shorts are a good idea. Like I said, in my case, my problem I think is my saddle height. My saddle's too low, and when I really start, you know, pumping the pedals and I really start ramping it up. Um, I sort of move around a little on my saddle. You can you can tell your saddle's too low if you if you're moving around too much and uh, if uh, you sort of you know trying to go fast and you start bouncing on the bike. Bunch of cyclists. Woo! A lot of people. A lot of people on the trail. Um. Whew. I don't think those people are going to work. I mean, it could have been, but some people cycle to work in uh, their tights. Uh. Oh. It's that time of year. You're going to see more people on the trail. It's not just going to be me all by myself, bike blogger all by himself. Although I will be back blogger mostly by himself. I'm talking about myself in the third person now. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with me. Ah, it's not very comfortable having a bump on your rump. You can use, there, there are creams and stuff you can use <clears throat> if you're really having issues. Alright, they're waiting at the light, so you can only go so slow though. Hoping I don't have to stop. Gonna have to stop. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's warm out. 
Obviously, when you get stopped with other cars, the cars will just turn the light for you. Here we go. This guy's going right. I'm gonna let him go. Or not. Okay. Shouldn't have done that. Moved over from the left lane to the straightaway lane. Oh, not just because for uh, traffic purposes, but this road is sort of crummy. Uh, that guy looked like he wanted to turn right. I didn't feel comfortable crossing in front of him. And traffic's light right now, so I just scoot over. Uh, he had the right of way though. I think, because he should have had a green and right turn on green takes precedence, preference, or whatever over <laughs> people turning left. Oh well. You'll get that occasionally. Since a bicycle takes up less room on the road than a car, you'll get people cutting over into your lane on turns like back there and other things. That's why you gotta really own the road. Really take up space if you're feeling threatened. Let's make a left. Okay. The lawnmower man. Oh my gosh. It looks nasty over there. I'm not going that way. That looks nasty. Let's make a right. Glad I didn't drop. I didn't ride my bike over there through that. Doing some construction work and it's kicking up a whole bunch of dust. In addition to smog from vehicles, motor vehicles, bicyclists have to deal with breathing in a lot of other stuff don't get me wrong generally it's good to be outside and breathing air but uh 20 miles per 21 miles per hour that's just nasty not going that way almost to work now i'm gonna scoot over because we're making a left All right, this guy's coming. I'll let him go. All right. I didn't want to go this way, so we're going to make a right and do a U-turn. Sort of need to be at work and not be screwing around, but we'll ride a little bit more for the viewers. Railroad tracks to my right. I'm in Maplewood, Missouri, however, I think I might be on the border now. I might actually be in St. Louis City, Missouri, on the far western border. But just a couple houses to my left, I enter the county here. It's a dividing line. And this road is pretty crummy. Uh. So, sometimes you have to take detours as a cyclist. Uh. But if you're really, really in a hurry, you'd be 
taking mass transit, transit if you live in a country with good mass transit, or uh, driving a car or something. We're gonna chill here for a second as we wait for these cars to pass. One and two. All right. So now we're gonna sort of go back the way we came. And get back to Main Street here. Alright, stop. So these other people roll through the stops. Okay. Right. Let's make a right. Nearly to work now. I don't do a commute this long generally. Gone about four and a half miles. Depending on which way I go, I can get my commute down to three miles. It's generally three to four. If I wanted to uh, ride on the big roads, with the big cars, it'd be more like two and a half miles, I think. I do live extremely close to my workplace. Make a right, wait for the guy on the left, or he just won't wait for anybody. Now I'll go. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.